So hi, I'm Sammy, and today I'm going to be discussing the question, should adolescents have the right to make autonomous medical choices? So this was a topic that the Harrison debate team discussed in the fall, and I really identified it as an adolescent myself, wondering what kind of power or what kind of influence I had over myself in certain social institutions in the society I'm living in. So first, what is an autonomous medical choice, or AMC? So an autonomous medical decision, first an adolescent making one of these is an adolescent between the ages of 12 to 17, obviously before they are a legal adult. And to have an autonomous decision being made is one that is completely 100% independently made without outside pressure from parental figures or medical professionals, etc. Um, so just to go back really quick, there was a study conducted at Cornell University that discussed the top five phrases that parents say to their kids. And as we go through the presentation, you'll see that if we were to make autonomous medical decisions a legal reality, they would actually adhere to what these parents are telling their kids. So the first and most common is grow up. So first, by creating an enforceable claim to autonomy, AMC empowers adolescents to demand inclusion from the state. So inclusion from the state, a broad term, essentially means that individuals, or adolescents in this case, are able to actively participate in the society around them. If adolescents grow up in a community in which their voices are not heard, they're not going to have this kind of participation or this kind of inclusion mandated by state legislation. So for example, if there is a law that prevents me from doing something, obviously I can't participate in my state. Just the same if I can't have decisions about my own medical stance or my medical situation, I can't actively participate in the society around me. The second most common phrase is be more responsible. So from political disenfranchisement to dependence on adults for basic needs, adolescents have no real voice. Their lack of medical autonomy further marginalizes their experiences. So when adolescents are told to be more responsible by their parents, they're essentially being told act more like an adult or act more mature. So when individuals are uh, given the ability to uh, make their own medical decisions, they actually have a voice in what's being enacted on their own bodies or on their own experiences in society. And when this essential um, negative right is taken away from them, they have no ability to actually be more responsible or be mature. The third most common phrase is make better choices. So expanding adolescents' ability to participate in their own medical decisions promotes social inclusion. Social inclusion, different from state inclusion, means that adolescents' future um, after they make these decisions will be able to participate in societies around them. So if individuals don't feel that motivation now to make their decisions, they're not going to feel that same motivation to make decisions future, and they're not going to have the ability to participate in their own society. And the last is take better care of yourself. By giving adolescents opportunities to learn how to use their rights, AMC empowers them to overcome self-handicapping. So self-handicapping is a term that means when I do something that essentially makes something else limited towards me. Essentially, you doing something limits your access to rights or your access to opportunities in the future. So if adolescents learn how to use those rights, i.e. in a medical standpoint or in a medical situation, it can empower them to overcome the stigma of what it means to be an adolescent. So if adolescents now don't have the ability to make property decisions, make economic decisions, make educational decisions, they're stigmatized as individuals who don't understand what it means to be adult-like or don't understand how to make certain um, adult decisions. So by allowing them to make decisions from a medical standpoint, this allows them to overcome that disability, if you will. Um, sorry, the last is because I said so. So the lack of medical autonomy creates learned helplessness, disincentivizing teams from even seeking out necessary decision-making skills. Thus, they abdicate authority to adults instead of learning how to make choices themselves. So this because I said so standpoint of parents essentially takes the power away from the adolescent and places it in the hands of the adult, allowing individuals to be completely dependent on adults to again, make their financial decisions, make their educational decisions, et cetera, limits the power that they have and their 
motivation, again, to make decisions for themselves, future or later on in life. So the because I said so standpoint is uniquely harmful to individuals. So now a couple examples. First, this is Adeline Kesh. She has leukemia, or she had leukemia. This was um, an example from 1992. She is a Jehovah's Witness by personal choice, meaning it is not the choice of her family. It's not the choice of her parents. She was actually in the custody of her grandparents at the time she was diagnosed. And Adeline needed a blood transfusion, but because she's a Jehovah's Witness, that goes against her personal values and belief system that she's instituted. But because she was 16 years of age, her grandparents were able to override her witches and she was essentially forced to have the blood transfusion against her will. So this is a key example of when an, ad, uh, of when an individual's autonomy is taken away from them just because of the age or the stigma of what it means to be an adolescent. So essentially, since she was forced to adhere to some sort of belief system that was different from her own, her experience became further marginalized and she wasn't able to access the same rights. Uh, this is Dennis Lindbergh, an example from 1997, who was 16 years of age when he got into a head-on car accident that left him in a vegetative state. Previously, Dennis had made it very clear that he didn't want any extraordinary measures to be taken to save his life if he were ever in a vegetative state or ever in a situation that required that kind of decision making. But his mother, Kathy, pictured on the left, she overread his wishes again and essentially forced the doctors to um, take extraordinary measures to try to save Dennis's life, even though that didn't end up working out for her. Um, he ended up remaining in the vegetative state and the efforts that were extraordinary didn't end up being effective. Again, it's an example of when an individual's personal belief values were stripped away from him just because he wasn't of age. He wasn't 12, he wasn't eight, he was 16 years of age. That's two years away from being able to make the choice himself, but because he was two years away, he didn't have that final say over how he chose to die or um, how he chose to uh, spend his last days. And the last example is more recent. This is from 2010, I believe. This is Cassandra C. She has lymphoma. Um, this is a cancer of the lymph in, in your throat. And she needed to undergo chemotherapy. It was a matter of life and death. And she decided she didn't want to have the chemotherapy. She um, brought this case to court, actually. Her parents, her father specifically, wanted her to have the chemotherapy. And Cassandra has written memoirs and journal entries uh, describing the experience is being strapped down to her medical bed, being forced to undergo a treatment that she didn't actually want because when they brought it to court, the state said that she was required to have the chemotherapy because she was um, 17 years of age and not 18 yet. Well, she basically describes the experience as because it's her body and because it's her life that she wants to live, she doesn't feel that it's right for other people to make that decision for her. If it's her body and she's been taking care of it for 17 years, she should be able to dictate how she wants to treat it when it does become infected or there is disease. It should be her choice completely, not the choice of other adults. Um, so what can you do? Now the choice of autonomous medical decisions is quite tricky because it's very subjective of what it means to be mature or unable to make your own decisions. So the mature minor doctrine in the middle is actually instituted to overturn cases such as Cassandra's where the state or the court in question can make the decision that this child is mature enough to make their own decision. The problem with that is that it's really subjective what it means to be mature. So a lot of court cases like Cassandra's end up going both ways and some individuals, some adolescents can still be affected negatively because that. Um, so the legislation is there, but it needs to be further to actually enact autonomous medical decisions as an actual law in order to create it, this kind of institutional change that we need. Um, but doctor-patient discussions and parent-child discussions are uniquely important in order to ensure that these individuals understand that the outside pressure isn't forcing them to act a certain way, that they still are completely autonomous in that decision themselves, which is uniquely important for, again, reasons like social inclusion, state inclusion, self-empowerment, etc. Um, so to finish on a quote, one of the scientists from the Cornell study, Jim Posnick, said, the moral sense in which your mind or body is yours seems to be the same as that in which your life is yours. And if your life is yours, then there must be decisions concerning it that are yours to make. So, in order for adolescents to be included in the state, included in society, be empowered to actually contribute in that society and later in life, they need to make sure they are autonomous in their body, their lives, and their choices.
Thank you.